Hey, it's John, I'm John Dugan. I'm probably best known for playing uh, Grandpa in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I've done three of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. Uh, the first one, the fourth one, and uh, the sixth one, <laughs> uh, 3D, was the most recent one I've done. Um, and I'm here in, in uh, uh, where am I, Moline, Illinois, <laughs> doing Midwest Monster Fest. So, so in 1973, the summer of 1973, I got an acting job at the Goodman Theater in Chicago for the summer doing a children's play called Terror Diddle Tales, where I was uh, dressed up in, in, in uh, multicolored tights, uh, dancing around and you know, wearing different masks and things, and, and, um, um, and telling folk tales and singing folk songs from around the world. <laughs> And then Kim Henkel called me, who was conveniently my brother-in-law. Kim wrote the Texas St. Paul Massacre. He called me from Texas and asked me if I was crazy. He was like, now remember, this was 1973, so he was like, hey, John, man, you crazy? <laughs> and of course, I said, um, Oh, yeah, man, I'm crazy. What do you need? You know, and he told me, he ran me down, you know, what was going on, what he wanted me to do. And so I, I, uh, I went and gave my um, notice to the uh, Bella Ipkin, uh, who was an old Russian woman from a pretty well known theater family, um, who was the producer of the play that I was in, and told her I was, uh, I gave her my two week notice. and. Uh, a few weeks later, I was uh, in Texas. Well, the, you know, the most challenging thing probably was just, <laughs> believe it or not, it wasn't an acting thing, but it was just uh, trying to be comfortable. Because it was in the house, it was well over 100 degrees, and I was in, you know, latex makeup, a wool suit, you know, leather shoes, <laughs> and, um, you know, after hours and hours, you know, for instance, like this, uh, this photograph here was taken 24 hours after I originally sat down in the makeup chair, uh, and it was the following morning, and we weren't done yet. Uh, and, you know, to get myself into a mental space where I just didn't want to rip my fucking makeup off uh, it became a, a challenge, probably the most challenging part of my role, really. I hate to say it, but... I, I had been working as a, uh, I had been working as a, like a grip and a, and a production assistant for several weeks uh, on set while they were designing my makeup. And nobody, I don't think, I don't think anybody knew that I was actually the actor playing grandpa until I showed up in uh, makeup and wardrobe on the first morning that I shot grandpa. So they were like, everybody was like, ah, you know, you, oh, <laughs> we were kind of wondering who you were. You're hanging around here all the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I basically worked with, I worked with Ed and, and, and Gunner mostly. And then, of course, there was a very intimate, <laughs> intimate scene with, with uh, Marilyn Burns. And I didn't know her from anything, you know. And I was actually quite enamored. She was, a, you know, she was a beautiful young woman and I was a 20-year-old guy, you know. And the 20-year-old heterosexual male. And, and uh, here I was having the closest thing to sex that anybody in the film was having with this beautiful, beautiful woman. So uh, in my experience with Marilyn, in the beginning it was quite uncomfortable which uh, I think kind of worked, really. And then with, with Ed and with Ed and Gunner, it was a, we were fast friends. You know, they're, they're, they're easy guys, you know, it's just, 
you know, we got off real quickly. You know, we got along well, so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, the fact that it became, an, uh, you know, an iconic uh, film and, uh, you know, not just horror film, but, you know, I bring this up all the time because I really, I'm proud, I want people to know this, but it was named one of the top 100 American films of all time by the American Film Institute. Not the one top 100 horror films, but one of the top 100 films you know, in American film history. So uh, I'm, I'm very proud of that. And of course, shocked, surprised, and uh, pissed off. <laughs> you know, that I didn't have representation. I didn't have an agent, a lawyer, and somebody covering my ass. But uh, with the creative bookkeeping that happened, um, it probably wouldn't have mattered anyhow, you know. But here I am, you know, the, the fact that it, be, it became such an iconic film, and we have new fans born every day, and, and I here I am 46 years later here, sitting here in Moline, Illinois, of all places, making money, uh, talking to fans, you know, and, and selling autographed pictures and having fun. And, you know, so it's become my retirement, essentially, because God knows I don't make enough on, you know, Social Security to live. Um, so, all right, you know, it's been a wonderful experience. You know, I, I'm so thankful to my fans, for one thing, for, you know, keeping us going for all of these years, you know. You know, I can't express that enough. You know, it's all about them. They've done it, you know. We spent a few weeks making a film. They've spent years and years keeping us alive, so. Well, I was in the fourth one. And, I, you know, I got to spend a day working with Renee Zellweger, who at the time was just a girl, you know, nobody knew she was, she wasn't Renee Zellweger, she was just Renee Zellweger, you know. I think she was 22 and I was 40. Or maybe she was 24 and I was, I was 40, I know that. And uh, uh, it was a trip being back, you know, because Marilyn was in the same scene I was in and Paul Partain was in the same scene that I was in. She was a patient laying on a gurney and he was like the, the male nurse or the orderly, whatever, they're pushing the gurney through the hospital. Um, so it's kind of a reverse thing. Instead of her pushing him in the wheelchair, he was pushing her on a, you know, on a, on a hospital gurney. Uh, and we got have lunch together. I hadn't seen him for a while, you know. And um, on the sixth one, which is, uh, here, can you get that? That's me. That's Grandpa on Texas Chainsaw 3D. So there's 38 years between this one and that one. And it was, uh, you know, being in my uh, uh, trailer, what's the other thing <laughs> about 3D? They had money, you know. I had an air-conditioned trailer, or a honey wagon. I, you know, I had a, I had a part of an air-conditioned trailer. You know, but I had my own bathroom, my own little place to lay down, my own place to sit, my own makeup table. Um, and I ended up having lunch because it was so hot outside, of course, 38 years later, it was 103 degrees at 10.30 in the morning. And I'm in a wool suit and makeup, again. You know. So the makeup crew wouldn't let me outside because I, this was, uh, that was silicone. Super, super thin. And you could like read a newspaper to it and so it would melt in the heat. So they kept yelling at me to go back inside. And uh, um, now I've lost track of what I was saying. Oh, oh, so I ended up having lunch at my makeup table in front of a mirror. And, uh, you know, I looked up and I, I looked exactly like my father did about a year before he passed away, when he was in his late 80s. And, and so I just ate lunch and stared in the mirror and it was like I was having lunch with my dad. It was... Uh, it's kind of neat. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, it was surrealistic. 
it was moving because uh, because I look so much like my old man, and you know I miss my old man, and I still miss my old man. Uh, and it paid well on time. <laughs> and I had an air con I mentioned the air conditioned trailer part. <laughs> So, uh, you know, the production company took very good care of me, so uh, I was very pleased with the experience. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Oh, well, yeah, I would just like to thank the, and again, you know, I said this before, but I'd like to thank the fans, you know, for keeping us alive all these years and for keep, you know, keep being fans and keep coming out and seeing us and support not just us, but support independent film. Um, you know, it's not all great, but some of it's quite good, you know. Uh, if you find a filmmaker that you like, follow them and, and help them. You know, if they have a fundraiser, you know, toss them 10 bucks. If, uh, if there's an act you like, you know, buy their DVDs. Uh, you know, support us. Support your local artists, uh, musicians, actors. It's important to, uh, to support your arts any way you possibly can.